on a summer morning in the little town of Cornetsville, Kentucky, just about 20 miles outside of Riverton. We begin our rail fanning journey into the mountains of Southeast Kentucky. First catch of the day was CSXQ 622. Manifest daily freight going from Riverton to Blackhawk, Kentucky. Q622 was being led by the CSX Heritage Unit of Western Maryland, number 1975. We would chase this train a few ways, going all the way up into Little Rock. I maneuver down the line a little bit and get set up with a drone camera overlooking Cornets Lake. We see the train cresting over the Jones Viaduct. Standing on the bridge of the entrance to the Cornetsville Lake Dam Park Recreation Area, we see the train gliding on through the Cornetsville cut. This little cut was handmade when the tracks needed to be diverted from following the river.
I couldn't stay here for the entire train though, for it was getting closer to one of my favorite spots. The train is in notch 6, as they're beginning their climb of Waverly Hill. Only about a mile and a half of a hill, it still climbs up to about 1.5% at its peak. The three units, the three big G, the three big GEs are making no waste with their train, for it's only about 6,000 feet. The two major cities on the Riverton sub is Riverton on the very east end and Blackhawk on the very west. The Riverton sub runs about 80 and a half miles and so this train is a daily westbound, empties and loads all the way over to Blackhawk where they'll be sorted and taken on to local traffic for all the various industries along the line. I move over to CP Ashburn, where our train comes screaming through the little settlement, as the CNO R2 signals are still guarding this point. For now, it looks like their days are not numbered. Moving closer to Little Rock, we stop by a little spot in, uh, known as Crawford. This area is mostly in between a giant valley, and so our train is basically on level, level ground. Rocking near 55 miles an hour, 1975 and the other two GEs are rocking through the valley. We're closer to the Crawford defect detector, which you'll hear go off in just momentarily. C.S.X. Equipment. Defect. Detector. Milepost. 284.4.
I waited out the entire train this time because I wanted to hear the defect detector go off again to see if our train passed or failed. Or in our terms, in any tricycle. C S X Equipment Defect Detector Milepost two eight four point four no defects. Repeat no defects. Total axle five six zero length of train seven four nine zero end of transmission little rock nestled nestled as the halfway point between riverton and blackhawk it's a nice little settlement town built around the railroad originally a booming coal town over the years it has slowly degraded into just being a part of a, of the mainline run a few industries are still served here and two coal mines are still served out of the yard 1975 and their train passed by the Little Rock Yard with little to no effort. We see a load of coal drag in the distance, split up into two different parts. We will see them double up out of the yard and leave later on in the video. As this train is passing by, I just wanted to take the moment to apologize for not making much more content than what I have. It has been really busy and hectic here as of late. However, I do plan on making more content for the channel and making more videos along the way. If you liked some of the videos like this, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and comment down below on what other kind of things you would like to see about the Riverton route or other routes of that nature. If you want to see a rail fitting on one of the other routes made by other people, also leave a comment down below for that as well. I leave out for breakfast, but when I made my way back, I was surprised to see the Little Rock local job backing their way out of the yard. This train will back their way a little bit onto the main, past the control points, and then diverge over to track number two, which will, they, which will then diverge over onto the Holly Figget branch, known as the X Denton Subdivision. The Denton Subdivision used to run about 26 to 32 miles over to Denton, Kentucky where it was once a prominent coal town. Several mines had closed over the years, and now the track only reaches about 15 miles of that. The rest of it has been completely demolished.
two CSX GP38s are leading this train today. CSX 2530, XSCL 530 is on the point. Next to the Conway Stave Spur, we get a better view as our train it makes their way onto the Denton Sub. Now, I don't know if there was a crossing malfunction or what, but it seemed like that these crossing that these crossing signals, whenever they were on the Denton subdivision, seemed to not work unless he was right on top of it. The way of building cities is amazing, especially around railroad towns. Instead of opting to having street running, Little Rock opted to have the roads go around the tracks. And since you get views such as this, where the tracks literally go in between two different little streets, one street being Main Street to Little Rock, and the other being the entrance to the Little Rock High School, our train glides right through. This train is a turn job, and will go about 5 miles up to Denton Sub, where it will reach the Little Rock Industrial Area. Several of these cars will be dropped off along the way. I make my way back to the main line, for I hear something special coming. The sister train to Q622. Q623 rounds the corner with some very unique power. CSX 911 and 1776, along with two other GE brethren, are on the point of this train as they rock their way to Riverton. Not too long after this train was passing by though, 
We heard some other horns. The coal train was ready to double up and depart at Little Rock. This train was loaded at the TGI coal, coal loading facility just off the Beaver Creek branch. This train is a as needed train to Riverton where it will go to the Riverton power station, be emptied out, and then sent back. For when it's time for another load, the, the local crews here in Little Rock will back the train up the Little Rock... Uh, the local crews here in Little Rock will back the train up the Beaver Creek branch to be loaded once again. An AC-44 rebuild and a genuine AC-44 is what leads to power today. This train was going to be heavy today. It required a mid DPU, an ES 44AH. They pull it out to the main line, and then the conductor switches the switches and back off to the second cut. We hear the defect detector going off at Q623. CSX Equipment Defect Detector Milepost 284.4 We hear Q623's defect detector once again. Let's see if they passed or failed. Hashtag tricycle. CSX equipment defect detector milepost 284.4. No defects. Repeat. No defects. Total axle 440. Length of train 6256. End of transmission.
We have an area view as the train gets set out onto the main. The tight-knit little community of Crawford gets woken up by the rumbles of the coal train. We hear the Crawford defect detector going off for this train. C S X equipment defect detector milepost two eight four point four. At track speed on the Alberts overpass. The coal train is making their way thundering towards Riverton. We listen to see if our train here passes or fails the defect detector. C S X equipment defect Detector, milepost 284.4, no defects, repeat, no defects, total axle 496, length of train 6128, end of transmission. And for our final shot, we make our way back over to the CNOR2 signals at Ashbury. 
Our coal train rocks through the little town as if it's passing by leaves. If you guys enjoyed the video, thank you all so much for watching. If you don't care, leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Please let me know what you all thought, and if you want to see more videos such as this, I do plan on making a whole lot more content in the near future, so keep an eye out, ring the bell, do all that fun stuff, but until we see each other next time, I'll see you on down the line. Buh bye bye